Hi guys, welcome to myvirginkitchen.com blog number 15. Uh, tonight I'm going to be making uh, a nice dish, I think, of chips, steak and uh, horseradish dip with a little side salad. So it could be uh, quite yummy if it all comes off. Um, here we go. Number 15, chunky chips with steak and horseradish cream. Um, there's a picture of a cow there that looks a little bit more like a horse with a heart there, but I'm saying I love steak. So even cows like steak sometimes. Um, so what you're going to need is you're going to need a steak, yeah. That's two sirloin steaks there. You're going to need potatoes for the chips because chips actually um, don't actually exist on their own. They come from potatoes, unfortunately. Um, most people, you know, if you go to a chip shop, think that, might think that they actually just come from the chip man. But unfortunately, they come from potatoes and it takes some work, so yeah. Um, you also need some salt and pepper for seasoning, a roasting tin, a roasting tin with some olive oil, which you're going to put in there. Um, some horseradish sauce and some creme fraiche. See, I went for the Weight Watchers one because obviously um, we want to uh, stay, you know, keep in shape. So you know, you have extra chips then if you go for the Weight Watchers creme fraiche. Um, a little bit of chives, um, some salad just to go with it. Um, yeah, did I say salt and pepper? I think I did. Anyway, I've never cooked a steak before. I quite like mine uh, medium rare. But um, I was saying to Becky just then, you're going to have it how it comes out and you're going to like it, please. Um, so uh, let's just cook it and see what happens. Okay, so I don't really know how to um, make chips um, exactly. But all I'm doing is cutting the potatoes down the line like that. Try not to cut my fingers. Cutting it nice and sort of thick like that with the skin still on. And I'm going to cut it like in with two lines. So you get two, like, well, three pieces of like chunky chips like that. So I'm going to keep doing that to the potatoes. And in the meantime, why didn't you have a look at me and uh, Phoebe building a snowman earlier? There you go. Phoebe is just making finishing touches to a snowman. This is a uh, Percy, the snowman, made out of frozen banana, carrot, potatoes, and she's just hand built that all her by herself in ten minutes. That's unbelievable. Um, and as you can see, she's got a very high quality uh, snow ski there, so she can get, plow through this immense snow we're getting in uh, England. Um, so I think I'm quite proud of that. Well done, Phoebe. You like that? Yeah. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed uh, watching Phoebe and I in the snow there. I've um, just got to say, that girl has got one hell of an arm. She, uh, she hit a bird out of the tree with a snowball, so all good. Um, I've finished cutting my chips now, and I think that's an adequate pile for just me and Becky. Um, but obviously if you wanted to start your own fish and chip shop you could keep cutting away and uh, you know buy more roasting tins and you know start your own business basically. Anyhow, these are going to go into the roasting tin. We're going to cover it with olive oil and then a little bit of pepper and then it's going to go into the preheated oven which we've got gas mark 6 for 45 minutes. Um, got to turn it and stuff a little bit. So uh, that's going to happen any minute now. But I just wanted to show you um, Becky's new calendar that I got for Christmas. Um, most English people would know this. this is a guy called Richard Hammond. Um, she's a bit of an obsession with him. But I just thought I'd show you. Well, this is probably the worst calendar in the world because normally you get like some little thing where you can put notes on it. But unfortunately, you know, it's all Richard Hammond. And you got this, and you know, I think I'll, maybe I'll do is save it for each month. But um, you know, there's no way to write notes. It's just literally all all the man. So uh, not a bad present if you like Richard Hammond, I suppose. But um, not very practical. Chips are in the tin. As I said, cover it in olive oil. It says two tablespoons, but just chuck a load on in it. It's all good. Um, turn them around halfway through. Um, just got to quickly season them. Just going to put pepper on there for the moment. Only a little bit. And it says halfway through to turn it around, but because of my oven's so biased, I'm going to turn it around like four times. But also to give it a shake. So uh, give it a shake halfway through. That's going to take quite a while while they're in there. So while that's happening, uh, you're going to season your steaks. So what I did was just got my salt and my pepper and just, uh, as you can see, gave it a good, uh, good going over. Then you've got to sprinkle a little bit of olive oil over it um, and they can just sort of chill out really. Um, while you're doing that, you've got to make a nice little dip, horseradish and uh, creme fraiche mixed together. Um, quite like horseradish myself. I'm one of these people that like put it on anything. It's a bit odd. Uh, my dad does that actually, he uh, puts like brown sauce on absolutely anything, probably even cake, but um, yeah, he's just obsessed with it, but I absolutely love horseradish, so I'm quite happy about making this. 
Right, time to make the horseradish creamy thing. It's um, basically 100 grams of creme fraiche, which I've got a 200 grams tub there. I'm gonna basically pour half of that in because then that would hopefully be 100 grams. Um, you then put um, one teaspoon of chives in, um, which I've got a little tub here, chives. Um, and then you're gonna um, add your horseradish. Now, as I said, I absolutely love horseradish, but I'm not gonna um, put loads in. It says one tablespoon um, should be like a, a good amount, but if you put more than that in, you know, you must have a good liking for horseradish. So I would really like to put five tablespoons in if I can, but for the sake of, um, you know, having a happy girlfriend, I'm gonna um, just put the one tablespoon in and, uh, you know, try and make this nice and mild and keep it, keep it okay. Right, so I'm just stirring it around now. Sauce is done, let's give it a quick try. Oh yeah, baby, that is a, that's got one hell of a kick to it. Um, I'm gonna add some more horseradish. In fact, the rest of the tub just to calm that down a bit for Becky, because, uh, ooh, that is a good one. Um, so that's the dip all done. That actually is like silent but deadly. You look at that and you think it's sort of like a nice, innocent, like yogurt thing. But um, no, that is, uh, reminds me of a story actually. Um, I used to get French students with my mum when we were younger and I used to make friends with them because, well I just did, I like speaking French to them and trying to learn it and I quite like kissing that way as well. Anyway, that's another story. And basically, I, um, I said to the uh, French person, we were sitting down for roast dinner and then my mum used to make these amazing rice puddings and she still does actually. Um, but um, I said to the French person we sat down, I was like, um, it is a tradition to put vinegar on your rice pudding. And this guy obviously, you know, he's only 13 or so and he built up loads of trust and he says like, oh yeah, he must be talking sense. So he, um, he put vinegar on his uh, rice pudding and uh, he was in bed ill for the next two days, not feeling very good. So uh, that was a good story for my youth. Anyway, um, sauce is done, waiting for the steaks. Uh, chips, I'm gonna just shake them about in a minute. Um, and then we're, then we're cooking. All right, so that's been uh, about 35 minutes now. I've turned the chips around three times. Um, and Becky has, has informed me she wants quite a well done steak, probably for health and safety reasons. So I'm um, gonna put on the George Foreman and get one of her steaks on. Um, the uh, George Foreman's picked Justin Timberlake to listen to today, so not a bad choice. Um, so there's the steaks. I've already plated up a little bit of uh, salad already just to get ahead of myself. Ooh. I'm just literally gonna grab a steak and uh, place it on the grill. So I'm gonna let that cook away for a bit, um, probably about five, 10 minutes, considering she wants it well done, and we'll take it from there. All right, that's just about time. It's about to take Becky's off. It's been about sort of 10 minutes, flipped it over in between. Um, looking like that, so not too bad. Um, just gonna put that on a plate, put it in the oven for a couple of minutes just to keep it warm. Uh, put mine on for a little bit less because I'm going to try and do mine a little medium rare. But to be honest, I'm going to take I take it as it comes because um, uh, you know I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Um, and the chips should be ready in about two or three minutes anyway, so it should all come together nicely. Right, so I'm going to try and do a, a medium rare steak. <sighs> so that's only been on about 30 seconds. Um, I'm going to leave that for a teeny bit longer. You can see it's brown on the edge. And I'm going to flip it over, and then uh, it should be raw. And if I don't make any more of these videos for a while. You know it went wrong. Okay, so that's been about two minutes. Um, I think I've overdone it a little bit, so mine might be like medium to well done, but that's what it looks like. There's still a little bit of red in there, so I'm gonna whip it off of that now, and um, either way, I'm gonna eat it, to be honest. Right, so that's done now. Uh, chips are on there, looking kind of cool. Got your steak and that, and then you're just gonna get a little bit of your um, horseradishy sauce thing, put it over there, maybe a little bit on the steak, I don't know, as you can see that, that's not very artistic, but you get the idea. Kind of looks like a really dodgy mayonnaise on a night out after a kebab, but it, I don't know. It does taste kind of good, I think, the sauce anyway. Let's give it a try. Ooh. Oh, great. That's cool, the chips came out well. Uh, they're not undercooked, so that's all good. Nice and crispy, and the steak's nice as well. So um, give that one a try and see if you can do a medium rare. I mean, I couldn't, but at least it's cooked. Um, see you next time.